Hey guys, and welcome to the channel today. Today we're gonna to be looking at how I painted my Tor Garadon for my Imperial Fists army. Now, before we jump into the painting, I wanna talk about two different things when it comes to painting. The first thing is, let's talk about painting yellow. Now, I know yellow is a color that for a lot of people, they try to avoid it as much as possible. They find yellow difficult to work with. They find yellow to be streaky or they can't get the right color temperature they're looking for. They get this bright yellow that they just find lacking a lot of the contrast and the depth they're looking for, or they just kind of get this brown color that's not yellow. It doesn't have the feel that they really want to get out of their yellow. Well, if that's you and you're struggling to do yellow, let me just say yellow is just like any other color. So if you're struggling with it, you're probably just painting yellow wrong. Here's what I mean by that. If you paint with contrast paints, you don't spray your model in chaos black primer and then try to put your contrast paints over it. That wouldn't work. It, that's not how those colors are designed to work. It's not how color works in general. If you were to prime your model, say in chaos black, and then you wanted to paint white over top of it, or you wanted to paint a light red over top of it, it would change the way in which your colors are going to act. They wouldn't have the same vibrancy as say priming it in a white or like gray, or even in a zenithal, and then doing those things. It's the same way with yellow. You need to understand how to create depth with yellow. And the easiest way to do that is in your priming stage. Make sure that you prime with a reddish, brownish, or pinkish kind of color, and it will vastly change the way that yellow is painted. It'll make it look so much better. It, ha it has so much more depth to it. It won't be just that bright kind of eyesore of a yellow. It'll give you a lot of depth to your yellow. One of the things you're gonna see in the video is the way that I paint yellow is in stages by adding a base primer color that's really going to help pop on the yellow and then adding a highlight and then actually coming back in and adding a shade. And the thing is, none of those colors are actually yellows. So if you're struggling painting your yellows, hopefully this will give you a little bit of inspiration. Hopefully this will help you a little bit when it comes to understanding how to paint yellow in a much better way. Yellow is a fun color and it should be fun to paint. Don't be scared of it. Try some different techniques. Try some different ways to achieve high-end results because once you get high-end results with yellow, man, that can really make your models pop. Point number two that I wanna talk about is when it comes to painting, the amount of time you put in is the amount of quality that you're gonna get out. And that may seem incredibly obvious, but for a lot of us, we really are trying to cut some steps because we only have so much time and we wanna paint high quality miniatures, but we want to make sure that we're still able to paint all of these miniatures that we have. But when you boil it down, it really does come down to the fact that the more time you put in, the higher the quality of the miniature. I spent a lot of time on Tor Garadon, and I'm gonna tell you, I had to put him down and say he needs to be done because I've gotta move on and paint some other things, even though there's quite a few extra things that I would want to come back and do. One of the things that I didn't do on this model that when I sat down and started painting him, I had every intention of doing was coming back at the end and reshading in the armor, adding even more depth into it. But I simply just had to say, you know what? Wing condition's been met. I'm happy with this model. He needs to get put down because I have to get to other ones, especially with the Space Marine Army project I have going on. I've got a lot of commissions that I'm sitting on right now and I'm trying to get those done. So there's just so much time. But here's the reality. If you're only gonna put in two to three hours on a model and it's supposed to be your display piece model, you're not gonna get the same quality that you're going to get from a model that you put 10 hours into. And then you're not gonna get the same quality from a model that you're gonna put 50 hours into. If you look at these Golden Demon entries, a lot of people talk about the hours they put in and the reason that they have to put those hours in is because it significantly increases the quality. And here's the reason why because a lot of high quality painting comes down to glazing 
and blending and those things can't be rushed or you're gonna ruin the smoothness of it. If you're looking at guys that are painting incredibly smooth, flawless miniatures and you're wondering how are they doing that, a lot of glazing, a lot of blending and that requires a lot of hours. So it's okay to go, I don't have all that time, but don't become frustrated when you don't put in the time and then you don't get the results. Be happy with finding that medium of putting in the amount of time to get the amount of quality that you want. Obviously, we can always push the amount of quality we're able to fit into that time. But here's what I would encourage you to do. If you're gonna take a model and you want it to be a display piece model, give it 10 hours of time to work on it. Say, okay, I'm gonna take 10 hours and once the 10 hours is up, this model's complete and see where you get, see how high of a quality. And maybe for you, you finish the model in four hours. Well, come back to it and go, well, I still need to put six more into it and find ways to put six into it. Find your flaws in that miniature. Find the areas where you can push that contrast, where you can push those highlights. Find those mistakes and fix every one of those mistakes you can. Get to your 10 hours and then look at where your mini is at. And I would encourage you to take pictures along the way and see the difference that it makes the time you put in. But those are the two thoughts on this video is understanding one, painting yellow is just like any other color. Don't be afraid of it, but understand how yellow works. And two, quality is directly affected by the amount of time that's put in. What you put in is what you'll get out. Understand how to set wind conditions for putting the amount of time you need in to get the result that you're looking for. So with all that out of the way, this is one of my favorite models I've painted in a long time. I love painting yellow. I think yellow is an extremely exciting color to paint. I think it's an extremely fun color to paint. It has a lot of depth to it. It has a lot of possibilities that you can do with it. I love this sculpt. I think the Imperial Fists as a whole, they just appeal to me. So man, this was an exciting paint job. So let's go ahead and let's jump right into the painting. To start the process of doing this yellow armor, the first thing that I do is I prime the entire model in Vallejo Surface Primer Red Brown Color. It works really well to build up these white highlights over top of, and it really helps give your yellow a lot more oomph, a lot more color, a lot more depth, a lot more contrast. All I do with this white ink is I obviously use an airbrush because it's faster. I feel like I get better gradients with it. But you, of course, can use a brush if that's what you have or if that's what you prefer. You can definitely get the same result. You probably have even more control. It just takes more time. All I'm doing is I'm applying this white ink all over the armor. I'm going to leave the very deepest, darkest places still that reddish brown color, but the vast majority of this model is going to be covered in white ink. And what I do is I come back as it dries and I reapply more and more white ink to the parts that I want to be brightest. And it's going to shine through once we put the yellow on. So I go probably three or four separate passes, shrinking the area that I'm painting until finally I'm just covering very, very specific parts with that white ink to get it bright. For the yellow, we're just going to put Imperial Fist contrast paint right over this. Once again, I use the airbrush. You can use a brush. We're gonna cover the entire model in this. It's gonna go on, it goes on over the surface primer, and it, if it goes on over the surface primer, it adds a nice shadow, it goes on over the white, that's fine. I missed the next step for some reason. I believe my camera died and I didn't realize while I was painting. But all I do is I take snake bite leather and I apply it with the airbrush from the bottom up and reinforce some shadows after I've applied this Imperial Fist contrast. It adds some nice depth to it. It adds some nice immediate shadows, even more than you get from just the white over the red brown primer gradient. I prefer to mix my own oil washes, so I'm gonna mix these two colors together and we're gonna thin them down a lot. We wanna make sure that we have it flowing really well off our brush. It's gonna be pretty much a pin wash. We're gonna go around and all you have to do is you load up your brush 
and you tap it into these recesses, you tap it into where you want it to go, and it will really flow very, very well. It's one of my favorite ways to shade things quickly. One of my favorite ways, honestly, it's just very satisfying. So it's, it's one of my favorite things to do in painting. The plus to this as well is you can really manage it easily because if it flows where you don't want it to flow, then all you have to do is take a little bit, if you're using mineral spirits, if you're using some odorless thinner from MIG or something like that, all you do is you wash your brush off in that and you take a little bit of that, a brush that's damp with maybe your mineral spirits, and you wipe it along the part of the model that got some of this oil wash where you didn't want it, and it comes off really cleanly, it comes off really easily. Uh, you can just use a cotton butt, a cotton swab that you have that's maybe damp with some mineral spirits and wipe it off that way. Here you can see me wiping off some stuff on those brightest highlights where I really don't want it to get any darker. It flowed over into them and that's totally fine. You just come back over, you wipe it off. I go back and forth between washing it and wiping it off, giving it just a little bit of time to dry and then going back and cleaning up. So here we are applying our thin lines basically to the edges. I played around with a couple of different ways of doing this armor. On these flat panels here, I really went more towards edge highlighting and it looks good, it works out, but I did actually some more volumetric type painting work. Um, I started out with just the line highlighting and I didn't love it, I didn't love just the edge highlighting, so I went back and started adding in some more volumes as you're gonna see here in a minute. So one of the things that I like to do is if I know that there's going to be a shoulder pad or a knee pad or a piece of the armor that I'm going to have to paint in another color, I'll take that and I'll basically experiment. I'll test out some of the colors that I'm looking to use on that piece of the mini, especially because I started painting parts of his armor and I wasn't completely loving the way that it was looking. So I came back with the colors and played around on just the trim of his shoulder pad because I knew that was going to be red so it gave me the opportunity to see how what I was doing would look but without actually having to come back over later and ruin it. Obviously if you're trying to paint up a model quickly this is not probably the best practice because you're painting something that you fully intend to paint over and ruin but this does keep me from having to practice on say another model and get it all up to this stage and it also helps me from having to make mistakes on a part of the model that I then have to go fix. Here I decided to do some more volume highlighting not just edge highlighting and it's going to be very subtle we're using a very thin down paint and we want to kind of build it up in very specific areas and we're going to build it up really slowly you can see that i'm doing all of this using a stippling type technique uh, i think that helps integrate the painting a little bit more number one stippling is just fun so just go for stippling whenever you don't know what to do because it looks great and it's also a lot of fun to do but it helps to kind of blend it in a little bit make it not look super uniform I, I didn't want these very distinct lines in it I wanted it to look a little bit more natural
we're really doing the same things with our Tanir yellow that we were doing with our Sahara yellow. We're just shrinking down the areas that we're doing it. We're making it a little bit more refined and we're just slowly building up those highlights. This is the color that I really did the majority of my work with, slowly building up a lot of these highlights over time of the armor using this color. I would kind of come in, I would use my ice yellow to build up those edges, to build up those volume highlights. And then I would come back with my Sahara yellow, I would come back with my Tanir yellow. Sometimes I would actually come back with snake bite leather and I would blend it back into the armor where it had gotten a little bit too bright. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't think you have to paint one color and then you're done with it. Constantly come back and refine what you're doing. If you make mistakes, that's fine. The more you do it, the less mistakes you'll make. But even for me, I made a lot of mistakes here and I just had to remind myself, go back, clean it up. Don't say, well, that's okay. If you want a high level paint job, you've got to put attention to detail into a high level paint job. Obviously, edge highlighting can be rather tedious. It can be exhausting, especially when you're working with Marines who have a lot of lines, who have a lot of edges, who had a lot of edge highlighting to be done on them. If I was to give you any advice, and I am by no means a master at edge highlighting, but especially for beginners as they get into edge highlighting, a couple of tips to help you along the way. Number one, when you can, use the edge of your brush. It's fine but it's not always possible. When it's not possible, make sure you're painting with just the tip of your brush. That's a mistake that I make a lot because I made a lot of bad habits of not doing this early on when I was a painter. And sometimes I revert back to those when I'm not thinking or when I'm not concentrating, or especially when I start to get tired and I'm painting, I find myself reverting to a lot of bad habits that I've built over years of being a young painter who didn't pay attention to those details. But use the tip of your brush a lot whenever you're trying to cover these lines. Don't just go, well, I have to use the edge of my brush to cover edges or I don't know how to edge highlight. But also use a very soft touch. One of the things that I do is I will come over and I will build up my edges using multiple strokes. And every time I come over it, I'm going so lightly that every time I come over, it, I build a little bit more paint each time until I get it to the brightness that I want it to be at. This allows me to make some mistakes and it doesn't really show through because I'm not going heavy enough that it's leaving a lot of paint. It requires me to make a lot of small strokes over time to build it up to the color that I'm looking for. The biggest thing though with edge highlighting is you just have to take the time to practice. You've got to get used to paint consistency. You've got to get used to how do I use the tip of my brush. You've got to get used to how soft, how hard do I I press? How do I get into weird angles? Things like that. And the only way you really improve is by actually doing it. So don't become frustrated if you're edge highlighting and it's not looking the way that you want it to be. You're improving. You're getting better. It's okay for it not to be perfect right now because it gives you a goal to reach for. It gives you a level of painting that you can start working towards and you'll be able to get there. I came back in with the Sahara yellow and I put it down to a really thin glaze consistency just to kind of bring it in 
to put all over these flat surfaces to draw all the colors back in where I felt like they weren't running rather smoothly. Now, when you're doing this, you may need two or three glazes to get it all into a cohesive, smooth looking. You may need more than two or three. So don't be afraid to come back with multiple glazes to smooth things out. For the black here, there's actually two different recipes for black that we're going to be doing. They're both based in coal black. So everything that's gonna be black on this mini, we're gonna put coal black all over it. Uh, I've talked about this in my other videos. This is my favorite black. If you don't like matte finishes, if you like more of a satin, a little bit glossy finish, this is not the color for you. Pro Acryl is not the line for you then. Uh, but I really like matte colors. I like the matte finish to my stuff, especially my blacks. So coal black to me is the best black out there on the market. Now our goal with some of these details, like this fist here, where it doesn't matter if we make a mistake, because we're just gonna paint white and gray around that circle inside the outside the fist and inside that trim. But still, it saves you having to paint over black with the white. So take a little bit of care. Make sure you know what colors are going in the paints around you. For this hose here, I don't have to be careful because I know it's a metallic going over it, so it won't matter if it's black or not. But where I'm painting white over it, it's gonna matter a lot whether I come back and it's a lot easier to paint white over a yellow than it is to be painting white over a black color. As always, this is going to be multiple thin layers. We're not doing it in one go. We're taking our time, being careful. We're making sure that it looks smooth and it looks good. We're not trying to rush it. So for all of our cables that we have, whether that's on the backpack, whether that's the cables he has running off of his gun or running off of his gauntlet, what we're doing is we're gonna give them a different color than we give, say, the gun casing or the fist emblems on his armor. We're going in with this dark sea blue. We're not making it super thick, we're not making it super opaque, and we're just painting it onto the parts of the hose that are gonna stand on top, that are gonna hit the light to give it a little bit of interest and not make it look just flat and black. We're building this up over small stages. It doesn't have to be super detailed because once again, it is just hosing. We're not looking to win competitions for this model, but we do want it to look nice. And this is kind of an easy way to get things that are small details that have the same colors as like the gun casing or markings on armor or something like that to give it a little bit of differentiation to make them look separate instead of, oh, it's just all this one type of color. We're just gonna add some of this ice yellow into our dark sea blue and we're gonna paint up some very small highlights on this. We're not covering a large area. We're focusing on really the brightest spots of where the light's gonna be hitting these hoses, and that's it. That's all there is to it. It's not complicated. It's not anything really hard to understand. It's just add a little bit of ice yellow to add, bring up the luminosity a bit, highlight it up. Now for our other black elements, things like our belt, things like the gun casing, the fist emblems on his armor, we're gonna build up from that coal black and we're gonna use an edge highlight of Eclipse Gray. This is a good equivalent to Eschen Gray from Citadel line. If you go back and you watch my Castle and Crow video on how I did his gun, how I did the black elements to his armor, you can really just take those colors instead. I did those in Citadel colors. 
but I'm trying to find different recipes. I'm trying to not make every single model have the exact same colors that we're using, using different colors and seeing some of the subtle differences in them and different things we can do. But when it comes to really flat surfaces, like this strap across his chest, belts, things like that, don't just edge highlight along the edges. Sometimes that's fine, but with something like this that's coming across his chest, it's kind of a key feature. We want to add some scratches in. We want to add some light in to make it a little bit more realistic and draw the eye to it more than just there's highlights on the edges. So now we've built up kind of that chunky highlight with our clip scrape. We're gonna come back with our graphite and we're just gonna give it a fine edge highlight. Here you can see what I'm saying is you've got kind of a flat piece right here. We're gonna add some interest. We're gonna add some highlight right here onto the top as if the sun's hitting it and there's a little bit of a glint coming off of it. We want it to go from graphite into eclipse gray into our coal black and to blend pretty well. So make sure that you're really soft with your highlights here. You want to cover a very small area. This is going to be your brightest highlight on this. So make sure that you're not being too aggressive with it. You're not covering too much area. Another option you could have at the very end of these blacks, if you wanted to, you can use that dark sea blue we've used before and you can thin it down to a wash and you could wash it over some of these belts and those black elements to give it just a little bit more color variation. Our reds, it's actually very similar to our blacks in that there's a base of burnt red, but we have two different types of red here. We've got our chest eagle, which is a more pinkish red, and then we've got our shoulder pads, which are gonna be actual red. So we're, do we're doing it with a base of burnt red. We're gonna be adding fuchsia, kind of a 50-50 mix with burnt red and fuchsia into this chest eagle emblem. Using our sunny skin tone in a couple of different stages, we're just going to put this into our base mix, mix it in, and highlight off of that. It's really that simple. I don't have a formula for how much I mix in, I just kind of go by eye and what looks good. And I do it slowly in about three separate stages, adding it in and building up those highlights. If you wanted, you could, at the end of highlighting these, come back with just pure sunny skin tone or maybe a little bit of fuchsia mixed into your sunny skin tone and dot highlight on kind of the corners and the edges of all of these different shapes on the eagle. use the exact same colors in the exact same process for the seal here on his purity seal. Use that fuchsia, burnt red. Came in, I actually took a watered down black to do kind of a shade on it and then just built up the highlights in the exact same way. Base color, added sunny skin tone to it, added more sunny skin tone to it as I went to build up each highlight. Now for our shoulder trims, 
to mark him out as being a part of the third company. We're going straight with our burnt red. Now we're going to do this in a couple of stages. We're not going super opaque with it. We're going to build it up. And as we move through our other colors here, we're also going to do those in multiple stages. We've got this very flat surface in the shoulder trim to work with. So we have a couple of options. You could either just edge highlight all of it and that would be totally fine. Or you can do what I'm doing. And we're slowly going to build the highlights up towards the places where the light's going to hit. For us, that's going to be the top of the pauldron. And that's also going to be the bottom outside of the pauldron, right below his emblem. So what we're doing is as we add our other colors into here, we're going to focus our highlights into smaller areas on just the places where the light's going to hit. You need to be aware when doing this that he is going to have his backpack and his cape on. So understand how that's going to affect the lighting of the back of that pauldron because it will. It's going to add some major shadows to the back bottom of his pauldron. We're adding our Antares red in. And once again, it really doesn't matter how much we add into it because we're gonna go very soft. We're gonna go very slow with these highlights and we're gonna build them up. You could go straight to Antares red and just build them up slowly. Adding in Aldebaran red it has a little bit more of an orangish hue to it, which looks really great building up in these stages coming through these colors. And so we're just going to, like we did with our interiors red, continue to increasingly add more amounts and add more layers softly, slowly. We're not going to rush this. We want to build up our lighting in a very smooth way. Finally, we're going to use pure Aldebaran Red, and that's going to be our edge highlight. We're going to come over the entirety of the shoulder pads and make sure that we get all of the trim inside and outside highlighted up. For the couple of white elements we had, really, I believe it was just this eagle on the gun. We've got the marking on his left pauldron. And then also there's a couple of skulls on his power gauntlet. For all of that, we're gonna do a bright neutral gray. And that's kind of the base of what we're doing. I then actually came over with a wash of dark sea blue in order to give it a little bit of depth and then came back over with white sands, just a touch of white sands to build up some brightness here. For this part, you got a flat surface. You're trying not to hit these black parts. If you do, just clean it up, but make sure you go slowly and it's gonna take quite a few layers to get it the way you want it to look. For the metallics, we're really going with a tried and true method for me. That's Dark Aluminium by Vallejo. You've seen me do this before if you've watched my other videos. So you probably don't even need to watch this again if you have watched those other videos. But we're also then going to go into our Rattling Grime as our wash, and then we're gonna build it up with silver as our highlight. So very simple process, but it's tried and true. It's hard for me to go away from it because it's both easy, they're striking colors. That rattling grime really adds so much color change to the metal itself rather than just shading it. I think it really gives it a nice look of kind of a worn metal, but not a rusty metal. It gives it that very, he's been in battle. It's not this brand new straight off the assembly line kind of color and I really like the way that it makes my metallics look. One thing to note when painting metallics is that they get streaky really easily. So make sure when you're painting them, it's okay to go over a second time 
talk about this all the time, make sure your paints are thin, but really make sure that your paint is dried with your metallics and make sure that it is very thin because if it gets a little bit thick or if you don't let it dry all of the way, it's really bad with streaking. It's really bad with adding a lot of texture and it can mess up a really good paint job because your metallics just weren't done well. Like I talked about before, our rattling grime, we're gonna use this as our wash. Make sure you water it down pretty well because it is a contrast paint. So it is much thicker. It has more opacity than a wash normally would, but you wanna water it down and then use it exactly like you would a wash. It's gonna go over everything. Make sure you're pushing it into the recesses. Once you put it on there, sometimes you can come back by with a damp brush and you gotta do this quickly because it is a contrast paint and you can push it into those recesses and really, really make your models have a lot of definition. Here, I took a black ink, it was Inktense Black by Scale 75, and I just came into each of these recesses on the cables and defined them just a little bit more. And then I also came and used that Inktense Black to define some of these things where the metallics had kind of gotten into it, and I really wanted to add some depth back. With our silver, like every time we use this, I talk about this, we don't wanna cover a lot of area. We're really looking for our extreme highlights. You can kind of even see where the light's hitting it, especially after you've added a wash onto it. And those are the only areas you wanna hit. We just want to basically give that effect of where the light is glinting off of the metal, nothing more. If you do more, you make the metal look really flat. You make it look, honestly, it just looks bad. It looks kind of corny, it looks kind of fake. Now, normally I'm not doing chipping in this army. The reason being I'm painting up a lot of stuff. I'm trying to do it in a short time period. I don't have time for really cool details like this, but if you are into chipping, you like chipping, here's how I do mine. Take my mahogany, I add it wherever I want it to be, all over the armor. You can go as much or as little as you want. And then I just take some ice yellow. I might take some ivory. I'm using ice yellow because of the yellow armor here. And I just come underneath it with just a small line and reinforce it a little bit. It doesn't take much, but it looks amazing. Here we go. Here he is all finished. Such a joy to paint, so much fun to paint. I hope he was as much fun to watch me paint as he was for me to actually paint. Awesome model, I hope this inspires you. I hope this helps you to go paint yellow on your models. I'd love to see what it looks like. So there you have it. That's my tour Garadon. That's how I painted him. Hopefully you found something fun, entertaining, useful, insightful, or maybe just inspirational in this video. I hope you're able to use it. I would love to see you guys paint your Imperial Fists and see the kind of yellows that you're using. It's my favorite army to see other people's paint jobs because there's so many variations to how people paint this Imperial Fist yellow all the way up from a really bright yellow that's very striking and catches the eye to a very grungy brownish color that has chipping and a very grimdark feel to it. It's just the Imperial Fists are a cool army to see how people have taken their inspiration and run with it. We've got a lot of other stuff coming out. So I hope that you're going to hit that like button. I hope that you'll hit that subscribe button, follow the channel, see what we have going on around here. We've got another update for our army project month three. That means we are one quarter of the way through painting eight space Marine armies. Don't forget at the end of that, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving away two of those armies to you subscribers. Also, if you would, maybe check out the giveaway video. One of the things that we're gonna do is once we hit a thousand subscribers, I'm gonna give away either a Horus Heresy Age of Darkness box set or one of the new 40K Leviathan box sets when they come out. So once we hit 1,000 subscribers, we're gonna kick that off and give away one of those box sets. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you continue to have a great day. Until next time, I'll catch you guys later.